I think a focus on family and is still is important even if you're not from the community because that's an important variable in our South Asian community and a, a, a sense that you have a connection to community, whatever that looks like. Okay. Um, so I think you could be as disclosive around that as you wish is important in that relationship, but to know that, that the, the values of family and community are really important. And yeah. so if you're not going to have a shared cultural background or shared language, but to be able to empathize, emphasize that in your rapport building, um, or to at least um, make explicit when you see it in your client's language, that that's about family, that's about community. Yes, I know that matters. That's important. Um, to validate that will, I think, ease that relationship. Right. So acknowledging the importance of that in the client's story. It's mm -hmm. interesting because as I'm hearing that, I'm also hearing a lot of what we were taught, uh, you know, in our master's about appropriate sharing, appropriate, you know, uh, giving up of our own information. So mm -hmm. how does that sit in terms of this, for the counselor coming in, say a green counselor that mm -hmm. has never worked with the South Asian community, what would you say to them? Well, you know, you know, I like that you're bringing it back to our multicultural course, right? Or yeah. that the work that we did in our clinical program. Yes. I, everything we learned from a theoretical perspective was absolutely correct. I just think at that time, these kind of tangible ways, um, multicultural bridge building and multicultural counseling actually plays out was less knowledgeable, um, I would say, at, in academia. And I think I, I'm guessing we have more examples of that now in, in the theories and the courses that are being taught. Um, I, you know, we were taught things like when you make eye contact or not. In some cultures, you can make eye contact. In others, it's disrespectful. No one talked about, well, what do you do the first time somebody said to ask you, well, what, what village are your in-laws from? Right. right. So right. those kind of things. So I think, I don't know if that's incorporated in current um, uh, curriculum, mm -hmm. but I think those kind of real lived experiences and ways that bridge building and rapport building comes or uh, it would be helpful to talk to counselors right in their in their curriculum in in their training, um, so then you're not you're less surprised um, in the field. Yes. And at the same time, I would say the field has become much more sophisticated in the last fifteen years from what I've seen, um, because we are supporting more diverse communities than ever before, yes. and there's while there's a lot of variability between different communities, there's still a lot of consistency. Yes. So I would say we just have a lot more expertise now. And so a green counselor would hopefully have access to a clinical supervisor who would be able to provide some orientation early on. So here's some of the things you might get asked and you might want to think about how you're going to answer that and, yeah. and be prepared. And things like, you know, eye contact and arm crossing and, and leg crossing are not the only tactics <laughs> that could get in the way of that. There's a lot more to it than that. Absolutely. And, it's funny as we're talking, I, I just am mindful of a conversation I have with a new client who came in and one of the first things he said to me was, uh, your last name is Anderson, is that Scottish? Mm -hmm. and, and I did. And automatically they asked me, were you from uh, your parents from this area or that area? And we had this sort of, it was a rapport building to be able mm -hmm. to establish that. And I'm also mindful of sometimes where, um, you know, especially the people that are working on this textbook, we talk about stirring things up, right? So where we might, you know, uh, step away from what we're taught and sort of mm -hmm. challenge some of these things. And, you know, if I had shut down that conversation with this individual, I think it would be, it would be devastating in terms of setting things off. So it just makes me think mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, paying attention to these moments where we can step away and we can build on that rapport building is very important. I totally agree with you, Marie. And I, as you, as you're giving me that example, I'm thinking as well back to how we were taught in our um, training, you inform clients around confidentiality that, you know, if you see them in community, they can approach you, but you won't approach them. Yes. Yes. Well, an elder in our community may find that as quite disrespectful mm. and, while you're going to maintain that boundary and community, they will likely approach you if they respect you and feel like they have a relationship because 
it's, it's also on the flip side, very disrespectful in their eyes to not approach you because you are a helper now. Right. 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 So you're part of the village of helping them. Right. So why would they not talk to you? Yes. Yes. And if I happen to be in, you know, South Asian communities, we tend to be more family oriented. So you may be at church or a wedding with several other people from your family or extended family. So the opportunities for boundary crossing are much more significant yes. in these kind of well knit communities. Mm -hmm. Right. So if I'm seeing a parent and their child and then they see me at church right and now they have their uh seniors with them who and i happen to be with my seniors who oh well we know each other yes. right yes all of the confidential and confidentiality can be broken with pure innocence right. and because you have a good relationship right so i think those reminders within the counseling settings are really critical mm -hmm. um and to it's the enforcement side that can be challenging and then that's why you'll hear in some cases from South Asian clients that they're not going to see a South Asian counselor, even though you have shared background and shared language, because they're so worried about the issue leaking into the community. Interesting. The counselor may never leak it by virtue of those, you know, proximity in living and working in similar communities. Mm -hmm. uh, right. It, it's, yeah. it can happen. So I think that's why it's important to get the, the questions out there about how someone from outside the community can better work with a South Asian client. Yeah, absolutely.